This video reviews 33 hair loss treatments, treatments already researched in studies for male pattern baldness. And after watching this video, you will find out not only how many treatments do you really need, but also which ones are the best for long-term effectiveness and minimizing side effects. And the ultimate goal of this video is really to help you become a smart stacker who uses his time and money right to treat his hair loss effectively instead of a hopeless stacker who uses all sorts of wallet draining treatments that don't even work. Before we start, as always, shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fiber you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. If you are a guy and you suffer from hair loss, there is a 95% chance that your hair loss is androgenetic alpicia. We're going to be talking about 10 different mechanisms of action. Male pattern baldness can be targeted. Each one of these 10 therapy groups has its own mechanism of action. Unfortunately, all of these 10 mechanisms are not equally effective, so they should not be used as substitutes, but rather as complements. And this video will explain to you which ones you should be combining the most and which ones you should avoid spending your time and money on. Let's start with 5-alpha reductase uh, blockers or inhibitors of 5-alpha reductase type 1 and type 2, which are reducing essentially the amount of DHT, dihydrotestosterone, in your system, but also in your scalp. You want to lower the amount of DHT in your scalp because it's very aggressive and it's miniaturizing your hair follicle most. Sometimes you don't even notice it at first until you have lost like 25% or 50% of the follicles or they miniaturize like 25 to 50%. This pathway is the most important. I'm not saying it's the most side effect free pathway to choose if you want to treat your hair loss. It's probably not, but it's effective. It's going to target the androgen part of the androgenetic alopecia unlike other treatments. And obviously the genetic part of the alopecia is not as easy to target as the androgen part because there are like 63 genes that contribute to male pattern baldness. So it's gonna be very hard to find a treatment today. It's not even gonna exist in a, probably in a good amount of time. Now for many people, this is already the end of managing their hair loss. They're just using finasteride or dutasteride, 5-alpha reductase blocker, and that is it. But it's not as simple for everybody because many people had bad experiences with a 5-alpha reductase blocker in the past or they simply don't want to take it. So make sure you keep watching to find out the right alternative you can fight your hair loss with effectively if you don't want to use any oral 5-AR blocker like finasteride or dutasteride. The response rates of finasteride are ranging from from 80 to 99 percent which is very high response rate if you compare it to other treatments and they're able to manage their hair loss long term like in this Japanese study where they observed these subjects for 10 years and they were able to keep their hair with finasteride only in fact the response rate got better over time there is no other study on any other treatments that would confirm 10 year efficacy. Of course, if you want to limit the exposure to potential side effects of finasteride, because we know it comes with side effects, you can use the topical version of finasteride, ideally the 0.025%, which has been recently shown as the optimal topical finasteride concentration for maximizing DHT suppression in the scalp and minimizing the DHT suppression in the plasma. Or you can just microdose the oral finasteride, as many doctors also advise. More than three years ago, I also decided to take a microdose approach to work taking oral finasteride and it really helped me keep the hair in the mid scalp and crown area regions in a really healthy condition and it also thickened those hairs. Or if you want something stronger you can do tutasteride or topical dutasteride which will block more of the DHT. It's going to be more effective in hair loss prevention long term but the side effect potential is higher even than finasteride so be wary of that. If your goal is to just keep your hair for as long as possible 5-alpha reductase blockers or inhibitors of 5-alpha reductase are the way to go. So if you have never used an oral 5-alpha reductase blocker before, finasteride would be the way to go, possibly with a microdosed approach, or to start with a topical finasteride right away. If finasteride stopped working for you, you can also switch to dutasteride and that should do the trick and help you manage your hair loss long term. And if you tried finasteride and dutasteride already and you may not be the ideal responder, you can get your hands on sopalmetal, 
a natural but also a weaker dutasteride version or something like a dutasteride mesotherapy, a potent treatment against male pattern baldness that has also confirmed a really good safety in studies that back it up as viable treatment in male pattern baldness use. And the last thing in the 5-alpha reductase blocker family is topical dutasteride. That is something I have actually tried in the past on top of my oral finasteride regimen, but it didn't yield any additional benefits. Hadn't I been on oral finasteride, I could have probably achieved better results. Talking about androgen inhibition, there is also the second pathway of using topical antiandrogens that are not suppressing your testosterone or DHT, they're not doing anything to your hormones in particular, but they're actually restricting the androgen receptor of the follicle from interacting with the hormones mainly DHT but also testosterone that are trying to miniaturize the follicle. So if you use the antiandrogen topically, you actually disable the interaction and you disable the further miniaturization of that hair follicle that way. Examples for this that are still highly experimental, I don't advise them, use them at your own risk, are things like CB0301, KX826, Fluoridil or RU58841. Now CB0301 and KX826 will probably be approved maybe in a year or two and that's going to be great news but so far they're still classified as, as experimental. They don't have the FDA approval unlike finasteride for example. Now topical antiandrogen fluoridyl treatment exhibited actually an improvement in anagen to telogen hair ratio. It may sound promising however in reality there was no actual improvement in target area hair count or target area hair width. Improvements you should be interested in the most. And my theory is that this concentration of fluoridyl was very low and probably a concentration of 5 to 7% would be better. However, it has never been clinically tested. I'm testing out the RU58841. For the last five months, I've been using it and I've been having zero issues so far. I will be making a video on it very, very soon. So stay tuned. Now, topical antiandrogens will probably be the best thing very soon because they are more targeted as they will be applied topically and there will be no systemic suppression of your hormones like DHT or testosterone and everything will just happen in the scalp tissue where you want this interaction to actually occur instead of your body. Right now, they're still experimental. As any doctor will probably tell you, don't use them yet use them at your own risk. It's probably not gonna be the ideal way, especially if you're like beginner, hair loss uh, sufferer, and you want something that will work. You wanna have a standardized dose. You wanna use something that many people have tried and many studies have already kind of tested. So in such case, it's better to stick with 5-alpha reductase blockers. You don't wanna be just mixing a bunch of stimulation therapies like the ones I'm gonna be mentioning without targeting the androgen part. Because otherwise, any attempts of reversing your hair loss and hair loss management will be very short term and they will fail and I have never seen anybody who will be just using these stimulation therapies long term without any 5-alpha reductase blocker or anti-androgen and even if you want to take a break from finasteride or dutasteride you can do it I mean you can cycle it on and off but you never want to stop it for prolonged periods of time because you will not be able to keep that hair because you will require that DHT suppression or some type of topical anti-androgen that will restrict that miniaturization process process in this slightly other way. Now the third pathway how to treat your hair loss will be to use hair stimulation treatments that are prolonging the antigen phase. They are known vasodilators. They are kind of opening up the tiny blood vessels in your scalp, shortening the telogen phase or kinogen phase. And examples of these treatments will be minoxidil, stemoxidine, procapil, bimatoprost, latanoprost, adenosine, carboxytherapy. Out of these treatments, the one with most research behind it, with most safety and efficacy data and high quality studies behind it is minoxidil. It's been available since like 20 plus years. It's over the counter. You can buy it anywhere. There are many people who have tried it and it worked. Obviously the response rate is low. It's like 40 to 50%. That means every second guy does not respond to minoxidil, but it can be uh, improved with using microneedling or dermal rolling. So I would definitely give it a try as the second treatment next to the 5-alpha reductase blocker or next to the topical antiandrogen. I would be using a stimulant like minoxidil. The other one, Procapil, Bimatoprost, Latanoprost, they have been compared to minoxidil, but, but they sucked. 
they were not worth it and they're also more more expensive especially the bimatoprost and uh, latanoprost Car carboxy therapy is the co2 that is being injected into the scalp for better vasodilation but it hasn't been shown as promising the data is very limiting i would say so out of these all treatments you see here i would throw all of them into the trash besides minoxidil. If you cannot tolerate minoxidil for whatever reason or you don't want to use it, maybe you have some side effects, rarely you get like dry skin and other problems, sure you can switch to other minoxidil. For example, you can switch from foam minoxidil to liquid minoxidil or the other way around or you can switch to a propylene glycol free version of minoxidil if you are getting some skin irritations with your current minoxidil and if you find your minoxidil to be ineffective, simply add microneedling and wait 24 hours and then apply your minoxidil. And if all of that didn't work so far, you can still add alternative stimulants of the anagen phase, like for example, adenosine. It has been shown as a potent stimulant in multiple studies already, even compared to minoxidil. And although it hasn't had like statistically better effectiveness, Patients seem to be more satisfied with adenosine compared to the group of patients in the minoxidil group. Adenosine has actually seems to have two mechanisms of action. It promotes the antigen phase, but also it helps to promote the W anti-beta catenin pathway, which again helps initiate proper hair follicle activation and proliferation. Adenosine is available in Japan as adenogen, but you can also get it in Europe and US. The problem with this formulation is that we don't really know whether it has the 0.75% concentration of adenosine in it. Concentration that has been actually observed in studies and marketed as effective as minoxidil. If the adenosine concentration is substantially lower than that, I would not expect high potency from this solution. Next to minoxidil, we also have oral minoxidil. That is something that is not FDA approved. Minoxidil topical 5% is FDA approved, so I would stick with that if you're new. Oral minoxidil, on the other hand, could be used if you have large baldness to cover, you're diffused thinner, you want to also improve the hair growth uh, on your maybe sides, donor zone, if you consider hair transplant in the future and you don't have a good donor zone. And it has been shown to be better in some cases than even topical minoxidil, but we still don't have enough data, but very renowned doctors and uh, dermatologists already are kind of switching their patients to oral minoxidil because they're seeing great results. And that's the reason why I take it as well. Uh, on top of my finasteride, which I'm right now actually cycling off, but I'm gonna get, get back on it. So that's just my story. The fourth pathway that has been identified as a potential pathway for targeting and treating male pattern baldness is the WNT beta catenin pathway that helps promote and initiate proper hair follicle activation and proliferation. The proper functionality of this pathway is being inhibited by dihydrotestosterone. Treatments that help to reactivate this pathway are, for example, adenosine, WAY316606, or SM04554, coming from SAMU-MED. Out of these treatments, adenosine is definitely the one you can get your hands on already, because it is commercially available, while the other two treatments still being in the research phase. Now, personally, I wouldn't advise you to focus too much on targeting your hair loss via this pathway only because from the research done on Samumet's treatment, it doesn't seem like solely promoting WNT signaling is the key towards curing your androgenetic alopecia. Now, what is the fifth group or fifth way pathway how to target your hair loss? It will be utilizing growth factors and stem cells. These growth factors and stem cells will be made from your own body tissues. And treatments utilizing that would be Regenera Activa, utilizing a skin biopsy kind of here near your ear, inject uh, that biopsy mixed with uh, some fluid into your hair. It's a trash, it doesn't work. Then there is also PRP, platelet-rich plasma therapy. It's your body's natural product. It's gonna be re-injected into your head. It really doesn't work, guys, for men suffering from androgenetic alopecia, unwilling to take 5-alpha reductase blockers or anti-androgens topically, they will fail with this PRP because there is nothing uh, underlying that will be targeting that androgen part of that alopecia. That's why PRP works better for women whose hair loss is more unrelated to androgens.
And also injectable stem cells are also in this category because stem cells, any type of stem cell hair loss treatment, I don't have so much beliefs in these nowadays. I wouldn't do uh, one myself. My disappointment and skepticism around current stem cell treatments for hair loss is based mainly on the recent stem cell overhype treatments from Replicel RCH01 or Folica FOL004. Treatments we had really high hopes in, but at the end we realized that they are not only far from curing hair loss, their efficacy is also so not even as good as minoxidil or finasteride. And this is in my opinion just another proof why focusing solely on managing your androgenetic alopecia via stem cells is likely going to fail on its own and it's probably not gonna yield any satisfactory hair loss stabilizing effects long term. Now the sixth pathway how to target your hair loss would be exosomes and exosomes are different than, st than stem cells or other uh, treatments like PRP uh, because they are actually derived from donors of some else and from their mesenchymal stem cells and so far we have very limited research I still don't have enough confidence in these treatments I know a handful of doctors who use them already and try to experiment with exosomes on hair loss patients but right now I don't have so much confidence because we have really not much studies right now so the confidence is very low here but I wouldn't put them in a trash yet because uh, they can have the potential another pathway pathway number seven that you can target your alopecia androgenetica with, it will be light stimulation therapy, low level laser therapy. Uh, it's also a blend of epidermal stem cell activation and prolonging antigen phase. That's what they claim that LLLT is doing. But if you wanna promote your antigen phase, it's much better to use minoxidil. And if you wanna promote the epidermal growth factors in your skin, you could pro potentially use low level laser therapy. But if you ask me, I consider microneedling way more effective, not only as a potent growth factor production treatment in the skin on the scalp, but also for collagen formation and neovascularization. Now the eighth pathway would be steroid treatments like corticosteroids. These are usually injectable, but also possibly orally, especially if you have alopecia areata, if you have dermatitis, they are being usually introduced as treatment options for you, but not for endocrine genetic alopecia. Then we have muscle relaxation treatments. This is the pathway number nine that can be utilized for treating androgenetic alopecia and it has been shown beneficial not as much as finasteride or minoxidil but I'm going to mention in this group we have Botox, botulinum toxin injections that are relaxing the scalp muscles and also scalp massages that have been shown to have some benefit but again scalp massages the Effects that are they are inducing are very small and you need a lot of time and consistent effort to put into the massages to get a little bit of something that you maybe don't even notice. That's why I throw scalp massages into the trash, Botox in injections, I would like to have more data. It might go to the trash also, but right now I'm still open to more research. So the last pathway, how androgenetic alopecia could be targeted or improved would be via antifungal treatments like ketoconazole is used for skin conditions linked to hair loss like dandruff, for example. That's why the Nizoral shampoo containing ketoconazole is approved for treating dandruff by the FDA. And and we know that dandruff can lead to additional hair loss or any other skin condition really that you might have like dermatitis, folliculitis can cause additional hair loss on top of your androgenetic alopecia. And for all of you guys who haven't caught their hair loss early on and uh, maybe you have a bald spot that now you, it cannot be regrown with any of the conventional treatments, even if you start right now, you'll probably be able to maintain it at best. And that was also my case and that's the reason why I got a hair transplant. And in such case, I can offer you an opportunity to work with me one-on-one. -on, -one. on the link in the description below, you can find more about how I can help you find the right hair transplant doctor do your hair transplant the right way. Avoid all the possible mistakes and pitfalls guys are doing, like ending up with overharvested donor area, ending up with unnatural results that require repairs or touch-ups later on, spending a lot of money for a result that is not worth it. That's something I want to help you avoid. I want to share with you additional questions and things to ask your physician during your consultation. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'm going to be here soon again with another video. Take care.